Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Now these are the two cars that are really the stepping stones, the entry level into the 5 Series and to the E-Class. It's the BMW 520D and the E250 CDI. Now the 5 Series has just had a facelift, so we thought we'd pit it against the E250 CDI, which is still relatively fresh and new. Let's see which one comes out a winner. Initially, the 5 Series doesn't look like it's got much new at all. The facelift is very subtle and you have to look hard. The headlights are slimmer and all LED. And the front and rear bumpers are new with more metallic accents and the wheels are now 18-inch. The trademark grille is more upright and the finish is matte silver. It's not hugely different but it still looks premium and contemporary. The update to the E-Class is far more visually striking. It's definitely more youthful. Headlamps are slimmer and also full LED and you get the more sporty Mercedes grille with the logo right in the centre. The cleaner lines down the sides and the LED tail lamps make it a younger looking car. This facelifted version now gives a lot more equipment as standard. You get the sunroof, you get powered seats with memory, you get dual zone climate control and there's a whole lot more. But you get a nice new wood finish, you get these interesting LED dials which I'll show you more of on the move. And of course, um, instantly noticeable is the smaller screen. But let's take a look at what else is new. The steering and dashboard are finished in beige instead of the traditional black, making the cabin open out a lot more. The wood accents are also a lighter tone and there are brushed metallic accents in the dash and the wheel. The iDrive computer gets the smaller 6.5 inch screen and it doesn't have the touchpad that you would get with the 530D. Now though the BMW has opened up more, it's the Merc that feels far more airy on the inside with loads of glass areas and good visibility all around. The interior gets less updates than the exterior, but the metallic dash trims and dull wood which are on our launch edition car look much nicer. The command system is better than before, but it's still not as intuitive or as easy to use as the BMW's iDrive. The dash still has way too many buttons and comes across a little cluttered. Now when you first get into the Mercedes, you instantly, instantly realize how much more compact this feels. It actually feels a size smaller than it is. It wraps itself around you so brilliantly. So it's just far more nimble and easy to drive. And trust me, the difference is huge. It's very, very perceptible. The BMW is a stark contrast. It feels bulky and you're constantly watching the corners, especially on narrower roads or where there's traffic. It feels huge to drive. But the BMW has quite a few tricks up its sleeves that please you as well. I actually love, you know, these LED dials. They're really nice. I love the way it sort of highlights the speed that you are at or the RPMs that you are at. And when you switch to sport mode, it actually changes into an entirely digital display. The 5 Series facelift comes with only two engines, the 530D and the 520D in different states of tune. The one I'm driving is the 520D with the 2-litre engine that produces 181 bhp and 38.8 kgm of torque. It's mated to the 8-speed gearbox as before. Put your foot down in the BMW for additional power and the gearbox does take a little time to react. There is a bit of lag and it can be annoying sometimes, especially when you're going uphill. But you can always counter that by using the paddles and then the shifts are extremely quick. The engine is still fun to drive. It revs easily and power delivery is quick. You definitely feel the punch. And if you don't heavy pedal it, the gearbox actually works quite well, giving you power delivery in a smooth and consistent manner. 
However, the engine makes a bit too much noise for this level of a luxury car and a little more refinement would definitely have been appreciated. Now, BMWs are normally the cars that are tailored for the self-driven and offer the excitement factor from behind the wheel. And Mercs, more for the backseat passengers. But this time around, the Mercedes pleasantly surprised us. It's a nice, responsive engine. You know, I'm climbing up a hill, I had to slow down for an overtake maneuver. Put my foot down, found the power again, gear shifts are quick, so it's really fun to drive. The Merc has the 2.1 litre engine which produces 204 bhp and 50.9 kgm of torque. And you feel that difference out on the road. There's a lot of torque on tap and you enjoy the drive from the moment you get your hands behind the wheel. The engine is also more refined and silent and the cabin insulation feels like a luxury car should. We had nice stretches of road that really allowed us to test the cornering and dynamic capabilities of the cars as well. And we came away quite surprised. The steering of the BMW is really nice and positive and it's well weighted. So when you go around the corners, you get such good feedback that it gives you a sense of confidence. Now the car is much softer sprung than before. So it does tend to wallow a bit and it isn't that absolute dynamic BMW 5 Series that it was. Also, though it appears comfortable at low speeds with just minor thuds felt over the sharper bumps, when you pick up the pace it pitches and bobs and doesn't feel quite as stable as you'd like. The surprising part really is it's normally the BMWs that feel nimble and agile and compact and the Mercs feel more like a boat. But here, it was a roll reversal and the Mercs surprisingly shined through. With its direct control suspension, it adapted to the road conditions really well and didn't feel as soft as the BMW. So around the corners, it was quite thrilling to drive. It also felt nimble and agile, but it did have one flaw. The only thing that lets it down a bit is the steering which feels a little light. It's accurate and turns the car exactly where you want it to go, but it just doesn't offer you the kind of feedback that would make you feel secure. But the lighter steering along with the great turning circle makes it so manoeuvrable. That's the beauty about it. It just turns in such a small circle and way smaller than the 5 Series does. Now on this road, having to have made that U-turn, I would have had to do a three-pointer in the 5 Series. So the E-Class just does it in one shot. The Merc may be nimble, but it feels rock solid at speed. And despite the light steering, it's still the more fun to drive car. The good part is the change in dynamics. It comes without much compromise on comfort. The back seat of the Mercedes comfortable as usual. In fact, legroom is better than the BMW and the um, seat itself is quite nice and comfortable too. Except that you sit much lower than in the BMW, window line is higher over here. But you have this nice sunroof over your head, so makes it feel really airy and spacious. E-Class really smoothens out the bumps and potholes really well and low speed ride is good. But the beauty about it is really when you go quicker. It's just so much flatter and more composed and you don't really get as tossed around as you do in the 5 Series. The two cabins are quite closely matched on quality and though the Merc's rear seat seems flatter at first, it is well cushioned and comfortable over a long period of time. The transmission tunnel is also smaller than the BMW, making it better for the third passenger at the rear. The BMW has one improvement. With the slimmer front seats, visibility for the rear passenger is much better than before and the seats themselves are generously bolstered and comfortable. But with the car being softer sprung over bumpier sections, it tosses you around more in the back seat than the Merc. There's a generous equipment list in both cars. Let's take a look. The standard for equipment in this segment is very high and with their facelifts, both cars have raised their game. Both get 8 airbags, 
full leather interiors, sunroofs, paddle shifters for the gearbox, electrically adjustable front seats with memory, electric steering adjustment, Bluetooth and USB support, fuel saving engine stop start systems, screen based interfaces and rear view cameras. This should be enough to keep any luxury driver happy, but there are a few differences. The BMW gets an AUX import which the Merc has choose for an SD card reader. Both have automatic climate control, but while the 5 Series has a 2 zone system, the E Class uses a 3 zone unit so rear passengers can set their own temperature. The 520D gets an electronic parking brake, while the E250 CDI persists with an old school foot operated mechanical one. A big difference given our road conditions is that the Mercedes gets a full size spare wheel, while the BMW has run flat tyres and therefore doesn't get a spare at all. Here's the thing, it's actually a really plain and simple verdict after having driven these two back to back. It's the Mercedes E250 CDI that's left me feeling impressed. Here's why. It's got performance, it's got comfort, it's got backseat space, it's got good level of equipment, it's got nice interiors, it looks more radical, feels more compact and nimble to drive, and of course the crux is better priced. So if it were up to me in this battle, the Mercedes E250 CDI is the one I would buy.